Hi there! So, development studio HAL Laboratory are usually known for their bright, colourful Kirby series. You'd struggle to find a bouncier and more playful series of games. However, in 2015, they released a completely different type of game, Box Boy. This simple puzzler was much more stripped back, almost thoughtful and introspective. But how did this minimalistic puzzle game come to be? Well, let us find out as we journey through Box Boy's development history. It was the early 2010s, and HAL Laboratory developer Yasuhiro Mukai decided to design and plan a brand new game. You see, although Mukai had worked on a whole bunch of popular and influential games before, he had never personally been involved in the early design and planning stages. It was time for that to change, he decided. Alongside his work on Kirby Triple Deluxe, which was in development at the time, he would design and plan a brand new game. But what kind of game should he create? Not a modern one, he decided fairly quickly. In his words, games these days are packed with all kinds of different elements. You have a well-refined game system, a large variety of modes, a huge mass of collection elements, an epic story, movie-like cutscenes, a huge game world you can freely roam within, and so on. For someone with absolutely zero experience in design and planning, Mukai figured designing a game like this would be simply too much to ask. Instead, he turned his attention to the simpler games of yesteryear. NES and Game Boy games, Mukai reflected, tended to be a lot simpler and focused on creating fun gameplay more than anything else. And so, he decided to develop a game inspired by these retro titles. He noticed that a lot of these older games focused on a simple mechanic, things like pushing square blocks around a simple stage. Mukai analysed this use blocks to complete stages type mechanic, trying to come up with a spin on it that no one had seen before. What was the result of this? Well, it was a mechanic where the player spawned square blocks from their character. After playing around with this idea, Mukai realised that the number of possibilities that arose from this mechanic were pretty much endless. And so, the mechanic that the game would be based on was decided. Mukai sat on this idea for a while, unsure of what to do with it. Then came the perfect opportunity. He heard that HAL Laboratory, where he worked, was accepting proposals for non-Kirby games. This was the perfect chance, Mukai realised, to turn his idea into an actual real-life game. And so, he began putting together a formal proposal. He hadn't really thought much about the visuals at this point, so he just used simple black lines for the level design. For the main character, he created a sort of placeholder to use until he thought up a final design. For now, he used a simple square as the character's basis. Any other shape would look weird dispensing square blocks. He then added two small feet so the character could move and jump, and eyes so the player could tell which direction the character was facing. And sure, that would do for the time being. Then he showed this proposal to two fellow HAL Laboratory developers who put together a simple prototype of Mukai's idea. Right, now it was time for Mukai to present this proposal along with the prototype to the studio bosses. And it was accepted! Now the development of Mukai's new game could begin in earnest. First, he and the team started putting together some levels. Their original idea was to have large play spaces where players could sit down and spend a good chunk of time playing. However, they soon realised that this didn't really feel right. Instead, they switched over to a series of shorter and more compact levels for playing on the move. Now, when designing a level, the first thing that would be decided on was the theme of the world, things like lasers or cranes. Then, the first level in the world would offer a simple puzzle to teach players how to use this mechanic. The next one would offer a variation on this puzzle, to get players gradually used to the mechanic. And then the last would ask the player to adapt their mechanic-solving method to the puzzle presented to them. In Mukai's words, Our aim was to keep things from feeling unfair and letting users figure out how to solve puzzles by themselves. Right, now it was time to take a proper look at the visuals. Up until this point, they had been using the prototype graphics and character from Mukai's proposal, but it was finally time to create the final look of the game. Mukai wanted something more lively looking, so he approached designer Haruka Ito and asked her to design the new look of the game. She tried out all sorts of things, putting lots of decoration in the background, changing the terrain from just black, 
She tried to think not just of a new art style, but about a new motif for the game, whether it should be based around jigsaw puzzles, stamps, or stitches. She drew up dozens and dozens of plans. The design process ended up lasting for three to four months, but still none of these designs felt right. Hmm. Similarly, they decided to try to replace the placeholder character Mukai had created earlier, but again, they turned a blank. They tried out putting Kirby in, but that didn't feel right, not least because having a circular character produce square blocks did not look good at all. Hmm, this was a conundrum. Then, Mukai had an idea. What if they just kept using the prototype graphics rather than changing them? The simple black and white look would really help the game to stand out. It was in complete contrast to the bright, colourful visuals of most other games at the time. Okay, it was decided. However, if the development team weren't careful, this simple main character could end up looking dull and lifeless. Because of this, they worked extra hard to give the character a large variety of expressive and full of life animations. The little victory animations, the animations that played when the player was idle, these all helped to create a character that, despite its simplicity, is incredibly lovable and cute. Now, the game's music was written by renowned Kirby composer Jun Ishikawa. To match the Game Boy and NES style of graphics and gameplay, he composed a minimalistic and chiptune-inspired soundtrack. And so, on January the 14th, 2015, Box Boy was released. It turned out to be a success, being described by reviewers as stylish and ingenious. And with that, a new series was born, with two sequels for 3DS being released, and one coming out for Switch, well, now. And I have to say, I'm so glad that this series seems to be doing well. It's all well and good giving people games that they want, who would complain about a new Mario or Zelda game, but sometimes it's nice to be shown something that you didn't even know you wanted. Something weird or unexpected, like Box Boy. So I hope that we get more titles that we don't expect from now on. And here's to the future of Box Boy. Hi there, thank you so much for watching to the end. I first played Box Boy a couple of years ago. It was kind of a difficult evening for personal reasons, but I found the game to be so soothing and peaceful. It was a big help to me at the time, so I'm really glad to see it go on to more and more success. Thanks for the game, Mukai and Hao.